It's Conduit News Radio with Paul Harrell. Hey folks, welcome back to the program. Thank you so much for being with us this morning, kind of in the home stretch here. Uh, I want to thank you for starting the beginning of your week after Thanksgiving with us here at the intersection of conservative ideas and reality. We're building a liberty machine here. We need your help. Head on over to conduitnews.com, by the way, and click on store and you can get our mugs, our T-shirts, and we would really appreciate that. Folks, I want to welcome to the program for the first time. We have an uh, author um, and, uh, I understand, trial lawyer. His name is Daniel Budafuco. Is that how you say your last name, Daniel? Well, we say Budafuco. Budafuco. That's what it yeah. was. Budafuco. Okay, all right. Uh, my producer was telling me uh, one thing. But anyway, so, uh, Daniel, you're the author of this book, Consider the Evidence, a Trial Lawyer Examines Eyewitness Testimony in Defense of the Reliability of the New Testament. Uh, first of all, welcome to the program, and what made you want to write a book like this? Well, thank you for having me. Well, I've been a Christian for many years, and uh, I started getting into the reasons for why we believe what we believe. It all started from a discussion I had with a fellow trial lawyer about 20 years ago, in which uh, it was a gentleman I tried cases against, and you know we had, we you know in the in the civil negligence field uh, of, of litigation, you know the lawyers we sort of beat each other up in court, and then afterwards we go out and have a cup of coffee or a beer, and uh, very much like boxers in a ring, it's not personal. Mm. So you develop relationships with, uh, you, you know, your adversaries, and they often send you their, their friends and relatives to represent if they're hurt. But uh, in this particular instance, I was invited to my, uh, my adversary, if you will, house, and um, we were hanging out on this back porch, and we started to suddenly get into a debate, and he was the uh, very liberal atheist guy, and he was explaining, you know, raising his point of view, and I was defending the Christian point of view of the Bible. The party immediately split into two. This is 20 years ago, you know, when things were less hostile, less divided. You could actually uh, have a civil today. You could actually have a civil discussion and disagree. <laughs> right. No pun intended. We were very civil. Two civil lawyers having a civil discussion. That's great. That's and, great. Um, <laughs> and yeah, and actually to this day, he's one of my best friends. So when I left that uh, engagement, I felt that I, while I knew I was a very good lawyer, I'd won a lot of good cases, I realized, I felt that I had not done a really good job in representing the Christian point of view, that I didn't know enough, that I needed to know more of why we believe these things. You know, if you're going to defend the position, uh, the Christian position, the, the spiritual position, the Bible position, you, you need to know some things. I mean, that's really important. I don't go into court unprepared, so why should I go... Uh, into life, uh, defending my faith unprepared. So I, I embarked on a journey, I ended up getting a master's degree in theology. I studied with top apologist Ravi Zacharias. And this debate has continued now for 20 years. And in fact, the other day he said to me, he goes, you've just demolished all my arguments. I have nothing left. So, <laughs> so he's, he's still not a believer, but at least he has no more objections to the gospel. And, wow. you know, it's very hard to, to change after, you know, all these years, but at least we're having a rational discussion, and we're getting there. And the people who are observing the discussion are sort of swinging to my side. If you're just joining us, we're talking with author Daniel Butterfuco. Uh, He's the author of the book, Consider the Evidence, a Trial Lawyer Examines Eyewitness Testimony in Defense of the Reliability of the New Testament. So, so Daniel, talk a little bit about this. Talk about how your experience as a trial lawyer examining evidence, things like that, how does that, uh, <clears throat> you know, how did that inform your your arguments when, when it came to writing the book? Well, first of all, I'm not a scholar. I'm not a biblical scholar. And the points that I'm using in the book have literally been around for centuries, in some cases millennia. So what a trial lawyer does, the good trial lawyers anyway, our skill set is to take complex subjects such as medicine, engineering, accounting, uh, you, uh, you know, science, in this case theology and philosophy, and break it down so that the average person can understand it. We are taught um, by various studies and things that we should aim for an intellectual age of high school so that when we talk to a jury, they understand what we're saying. You can't win your case if the jury doesn't understand your point. So what I've done in this book, uh, I've taken these complex subjects that have been around and I've distilled it into really one long summation or a brief, if you will, as to why I believe and why we should believe the New Testament is reliable. It's a historical account, it's accurate, and we can trust it. And so this is what trial lawyers do, and that's what I've tried to do. I'm also 
as a trial lawyer, I guess if I'm expert at anything, I'm expert on evidence. What counts as evidence? What's persuasive? What is reliable to believe? And why? What are the indicia or indications of truthfulness? And based on that, I wrote the book. Wow. So one of the things that I've heard, you know, for a while, uh, you just taking in consideration the uh, the resurrection, um, you know, in, in these uh, in, in the Gospels, you have uh, people writing down that the first people to see, you know, that the, the tomb wasn't there was uh, or the, the, the tomb was empty was, were, were women. And I've, I've heard in the past, you know, that's not necessarily back in the day, you know, a, a, a woman's word wasn't considered as reliable as a man's word, yet they wrote uh, you know, they wrote that it, you know, was women. That's the account that it that it was a uh, you know women that saw the the empty tomb. It, it, you you do you well, I that raised point? that in the book. You, okay, you talk yeah, about I raised it. that in the book. Well, the reason that, that's an important point is because uh, sometimes people accuse the biblical narrative of being legend or being fabricated, and it actually has so many points where it's almost proof. Well, it is proof in a way that it's not fabricated because if you were going to fabricate an account. You would never use women as witnesses to such an important event in the first century. And the reason for that is this. They not, it wasn't that they were poor witnesses. The women actually make the, the best witnesses. They know details. They know everything. But in the first century, yeah, they were, it was illegal for a woman to be a witness. And, and in the case of the resurrection, one of the first two wit witnesses was a prostitute. So you're starting your case uh, with you know, illegal witnesses, one of whom has a, a problem with credibility, right off the get-go, and the only reason that could ever be is because that's actually the way it happened. You know, so the Bible, you know, the New Testament especially, it records the good, the bad, and the ugly exactly as it went down. Mm -hmm. If you're going to fabricate an account of the resurrection, you'd have Jesus appearing to Pontius Pilate and, and, and Caiaphas, the high priest, but it doesn't roll out that way. Yeah, and isn't that isn't that exactly how life is, too? You know, and that, that's like another reason why it, it's uh, it's so reliable, you know? You said also with witnesses in general in the court, you know, you have the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and the various, you know, witnesses that are recorded therein. They all see things slightly differently, which is exactly the way a trial goes down. I don't know how many trials you've seen, but I've seen hundreds. And, you know, even in the best cases, the testimony is never exact because they're looking at it from different perspectives. So everything about this account rings true. And there's so much else. I mean, you have Paul defending himself before courts, and you can actually see that as a trial transcript. I mean, the, the, the detail with which his defense is recorded. You know somebody was taking notes. You can just tell. It, 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 there's a lot of good stuff like that in the Bible that when you really examine it, it really pans out as very believable. Now, so we're we're really right into the Christmas season now, and that, that's one of the reasons uh, I wanted to have you on, you know, this morning um, is because, you know, uh, there is the new Testament account, you know, uh, the, that of, of, uh, you know, Christ being born in a manger, uh, you know, traveling to Bethlehem because of the census. Uh, then you have the virgin birth, you know, you have these well, accounts. You got the prophecies. Yeah. You got the prophecies, which, I mean, the prophecies are in stunning detail. You know, people really don't do justice to the prophecies concerning Jesus. You know, they bring up things like Nostradamus. I mentioned this in the book. You know, Nostradamus predicted, according to some, that Hillary Clinton would win the 2016 presidential election. I, I saw a special on TV. It's actually ridiculous. You could twist those words to mean anything, but the, the prophecies in the Bible are not like that. They're so detailed that it would be impossible to, to miss it if you really look at it. In fact, one of the things I do all the time is I let people read Isaiah 53. I cover the top so they don't know what it is. Yes. I say, who is that talking about? And everybody says, without exception, everybody says, that's Jesus. What's your point? And it turns out that was written approximately 600 years before Christ was born. It's impossible to, to fabricate this stuff. Yeah, yeah, no no doubt. Um, I, I'm glad you brought up Isaiah because that, to me, is the, you know, there, there are some who make the uh, argument that, well, Isaiah— uh, was written by two different people. There was the, uh, the actual Isaiah wrote the first half, uh, but but the, the, somebody else wrote the second half. Well, it just so happens. It wouldn't matter anyway if, if it's the case. It's still still so accurate. Even if ten people wrote it, it wouldn't change anything. Yeah, that's a really good point. I I, I, I really uh, uh, really appreciate that you know you you bring in the Old Testament uh, because that that really does uh, make everything crystal clear when you when you realize uh, you know what what's in the New Testament. 
Folks, again, we're talking with Daniel Buttafuoco, and uh, he's the author of a book called Consider the Evidence. A trial lawyer examines eyewitness testimony in defense of the reliability of the New Testament. And you know what? It's Cyber Monday, Daniel. And I'm looking at this right now on Amazon.com. So, you know, if people were wanting a, a book or something to uh, give their family member, I think this might be a great choice. I, I'm sure you would agree. Yeah, it's, it's very, we made it very affordable. You know, uh, we, we, it's not about making money. You know, I make plenty of money as a trial lawyer representing accident victims. I do it all over the country. And uh, I wanted to give something back, and so we, we put this in a paperback, and the foreword was written by uh, the famous author Ravi Zacharias, so uh, we, we have his endorsement on the book. And I just want people to have a, a simplified account so they can arm themselves with some truths so that when they go to work or, you know, or they're sitting in the cubicle and somebody next to them says, you know, oh, the Bible was written by man, you can't trust it, or it's a bunch of fairy tales, I've heard it all. You at least have some response to, so we can stem the tide of degradation in this country. I mean, we got to go back to the basics. Well, you know, the, the there's a lot of, uh, you know, we talk about fake news a lot on this program. There's a lot of fake news out there. But, uh, um, you know, questioning, uh, you know, what's what's in these accounts, it's, the, you know, the fakest news of all in, in terms of, you know, there's a reason uh, uh, you know, Christianity has survived as long as it has. There's a reason, you know, it's the, uh, the Bible's the number one best-selling book, you know, or the, the most read book because, uh, because there is, you know, supernatural power in it. And, and on the supernatural, I'd like to ask you something, Daniel. Now, obviously we have these accounts. We have the, these accounts in the old and new Testament of these, uh, you know, amazing supernatural things. Um, you have come at this, uh, from an intellectual, you know, argument, uh, argument, uh, uh, from a trial lawyer's basis, what I'm trying to say. And you mentioned earlier that your friend that initially set, you know, set you on this journey, uh, you know, he's basically exhausted all of his arguments. He admits that, uh, that you've kind of nailed him down, you know, and yet you say he still doesn't believe. So why do you think that is? Well, because ultimately faith has to come from God. The only God can change someone's heart. Most of the problems, most of the so-called objections to the gospel, and, and as you you know, the gospel means good news. So we have fake news, and then we have good news, right? <laughs> that's right, that's and right. We, and, 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 and that's what I want to get back to. I want to get back to the good news, because it's the only answer for our society. It's the only answer for individuals. And, but ultimately, you need faith, and that can only come from God. And what I found is that most of the objections are motivated by a desire for people to live contrary to what the Bible teaches. In other words, you can't. In, it's very hard to sleep at night if you are at odds with your Creator. And so people invent these uh, false imaginations, these mental gymnastics, if you will, so that they can sort of argue away the plain truth of Scripture so they don't have to deal with it. You know what, if it's not true, I don't have to worry about it. But the problem is truth has a way of biting you in the butt, and it is true, and we're all going to face judgment someday. And I would rather know that today. You know, if you're going into a sentencing hearing, you better know something in advance before you get there rather than to just sort of wing it on the day of judgment. And so I'm just trying to sound the alarm, wake people up a little bit, have them consider the evidence, and at least give the Bible a good look, you know. If after you read it, you still want to continue the way you are, then that's your choice. But let's not pretend that we don't have evidence or that all religions are equal, because they're not. Let's look at the evidence and then make an intelligent choice. Daniel Buttafuoco, I really appreciate it. Author of Consider the Evidence. Uh, I love what you said about faith. It is uh, it is a gift from God. And it comes from God. And uh, I just I wish you a Merry Christmas, sir. Thanks for coming on the show. Oh, God bless you, and thanks for having me. God bless you. God bless you. Folks, we're going to take a break. Going to reset here.